2021 was finally when we first published our results. Results from a laboratory in Illinois suggest that there's new evidence from the behavior... Fermilab's muon G-2 experiment. This experiment at Fermilab in Batavia. It's called a muon. Muons? Muons. Muon is basically a heavy electron. Muons, they have a small hole. This is actually potentially huge news. In 2021, we published our first results based on the first campaign of data acquisition called uh, Run One. This was a dataset collected in 2018. It still gives me goosebumps to think about that time when we presented to the world what we found out. Uh, this was anticipated by the international physics community and still is. That was just the beginning for us and the world was uh, very excited to know what was going to come from us next. And the quest still continues. This year, we're releasing the results of the next two years of running the experiments. So it's runs two and three. In 2019 and 2020, we collected more data. This has four times the amount of data of the first publication. We ended up collecting a huge amount of data that needed to go through various stages of our own understanding before we could deliver the result and present that to the world. And, and so we had loads on our shoulders to deliver. So that brings us to our current publication. So a muon is basically a heavy electron. It's got a mass 200 times higher than the electron's mass. They are unstable, so they live only a short amount of time, like two millionth of a second. They are relatively easy to produce in accelerator laboratories, and also we can do many tests with them to see if we understand the nature. In the G-2 experiment, we're measuring what's called the muon's anomalous magnetic moment. Which just means it's the part that's different from two. So that's why we say muon G-2, and G is a factor related to the magnetic moment. Because the muon has a charge and it's spinning, it means it produces its own magnetic moment. The reason why we're studying muons is that they can probe the standard model, so they can test particles and interactions. The G-2 experiment essentially revolves around a huge magnet. The magnet used for the muon G-2 experiment is a superconducting magnet. It has a 50-foot diameter. We run um, more than 5,000 amps through it. Uh, which produces a field of approximately 1.45 Tesla, uh, which is about 30,000 times the magnetic field of the Earth. So it's a very strong magnet. Although we're using the same magnet as the Brookhaven experiment, uh, this time we've done a more precise job of making the magnetic field incredibly uniform. We shimmed the magnet very precisely so that the magnetic field would be as uniform as possible. They wrapped it in what we call the parka, which is the uh, white insulation that you see over the blue magnet. Obviously, bringing it to Fermilab, we also produce more muons, so in that way we were able to take a lot more data. We have state-of-the-art calibration systems and many techniques were improved in many cases. So in the end, we will have a similar statistical and systematic effect, which means that we will have used the best possible techniques to extrapolate the measurement from our data. Uh, we aim for measuring the magnetic anomaly of the muon to the precision of 140 parts per billion. When you try to measure the circumference of Earth, by counting your footsteps while you are walking heel to toe, then you have to count those number of footsteps really, really precisely. You have to remember those numbers really well. If you miss uh, a few tens of steps, then you immediately lose this precision. So we blind ourselves to the actual true value of the measurement that we're making in order to uh, reduce our biases. We don't want to be accidentally making analysis choices that will bias the result to what we've done before. Yeah, so leading up to the unblinding, we were all super anxious, right? We've been doing this analysis for a long time. We don't have any idea what the number's gonna be, right? We've done the whole thing without knowing 
how to calculate um, the final number here because we've been blind. So we, we're all sat there in the room, getting together, opening up the envelope, um, and then we have to punch it in the computer, get it on the plot, and then there's this palpable relief as we see the number pop up there, and whew, it agrees with our last result. Oh, the new generation's taken over, yes, they did it. So agreeing with the previous result is like the kind of bare minimum, but we've done so much work in terms of the years of collecting data and all the analysis hard work that we've done to really shrink down our uncertainties. And we ended up with an uncertainty that's about half of the previous result. So before this measurement, uh, we had measurements from Brookhaven and um, our experiment at Fermilab Run 1 from 2018. So you can see that those two measurements agree within their uncertainties, but the uncertainties are quite large. When you see our new result, we're agreeing with the previous ones, but with much smaller error bars, meaning that the uncertainty shrunk right down, um, and we're making this measurement a lot more precisely now. And then here at the bottom of the plot, you have the world average. And so now this world average is the, the most precise ever measurement of mu and g minus two. So we're really proud of this achievement to get to this level of precision, um, but we're not done yet. There's about three times as much data we've already collected. We're starting the analysis of that. Um, and we're aiming for a couple of years time to be putting out a new result where we're hoping to push this current level of uncertainty down by about another factor of two. Um, at that point, we'll be able to compare with the theoretical prediction um, and we'll be putting it to its toughest test.